Right guys, another fun day at Auto Style. Just getting the brackets made up for the intercooler and for the radiator that's just gonna sit in the back there. I've only got about an inch between the rail and the back of the rad. Just measuring all this out here where I've got a cut so that we can get a pipe off of here to then link in. This is where I've got to cut out. I'm going to leave a bit in there just for strength. I'd like to get it in carbon, but I think some things should just stay metal. The intercooler's mounted at the base, off the uh, crash bar, nice and solid. Now it's just got to be tacked in at the top, and then the rad's going to sit in the back here. It's going to look really cool, because the van on the outside, apart from a set of wheels and the Porsche calipers, you can't really tell that it's had anything done to it, really. So it's going to be, it's going to be quite funny when it's all done. With its harbour full of boats, its long promenade and its gorgeous sunrises, Hey guys, harness bars in, check this out. All blended into the pillars with a nice plate to make sure it's nice and strong. Right guys, van's back from Autostyle. It's just had the brackets fabbed up for the rad and the intercooler. I've gone for a three inch intercooler. Nice thick core, should uh, hopefully give me cooling sufficient for about 600 horsepower, it should be fine. If I ever need to, I can swap it out and I've got these mounting points here. Because I've had to put a big intercooler on the front, it's also pushed the rad back into the engine bay and my measuring was bang on, look. Not much room there, is there? It's a solid mount, so it's not gonna move around much anyway. Now, I know a few of you might be disappointed to see that I've rooted the wastegate back into the exhaust pipe, but at the end of the day, this is gonna be used heavily on track. Um, I do wanna take this out on track as much as I possibly can, really. And because of that, I just wanted to make sure I root this back into here. Um, if I want to, for drag days, I mean, I might even in future, just for my center pod trips, get another exhaust made up that comes up from here and then straight up through the bonnet here because that seems to be a good look. And, you know, you can imagine flames coming up sort of five foot up into the air over the van. It'd look pretty cool. But for the moment, track is is my main focus so now i've got to get the exhaust off it's all been done lovely absolutely beautiful about to wrap the downpipe on the exhaust but i thought before i do that i'll just talk you through the system so we've got the sidewinder manifold here lovely bit of kit love the way it looks as well it looks really good i've got 45 going back into a three and a half inch uh, system uh, we have got three here but it just flares up to a three and a half make sure it breathes nicely i don't think i'll ever need more than three and a half really so the system comes down here Obviously catalytic converter will be going into this part of the exhaust here. And then that's the back box there. A massive shout out to Ant at Autostyle. He's done a fantastic job. He basically said to me, look, you might as well grab all the bits on eBay because if you're gonna be able to get it cheaper or just the same price as I can for everything, including the pipes, the flare, the flexi, the two 90 degree bends, and also the box, all came to £147, which is great, really, value when you think about it. And then obviously, you know, welded everything together for me. If you've got a car that you need doing, just send it down to him. Um, it is a very short system, obviously, so I wanted to keep it short for a couple of reasons. Obviously, back pressure, and also, the shorter it is, the more flames we can get out the side, because they're not going to get, you know, lost in the exhaust. Hey, guys, so as you can see, the harness bar's in. Cracking job by the guys down at Autostyle. So now I'm just going to primer it up with a two-pack primer, uh, then colour code it in with the van. Right, the harness bar's now painted. That looks lovely. It's actually come out really good. It's got two coats of lacquer on there, so I'm going to give it a little polish and then thread the seat belts through and put in some retainers as well for the straps so that they don't go walkies up and down the bar. Turbo's on. Everything's still a bit loose because I'm going to get everything in its final position. I've also wrapped a downpipe. It's a fiddly job. It just took me a little while to do it, but... It's actually looking spot on now, really happy with that. Because of the difference in diameter up here, I had to kind of go over the other side and then sort of lattice it back. But uh, it's all wrapped now. Um, I don't want this to be rocking the turbo or trying to crack the exhaust housing. So again, you'll see f more flexes up there to really lock things in tight. It's on there, isn't it? It's on. Um, so things are looking pretty tight in here. I'm gonna have some eight inch fans on the back of the rad here, which will look pretty cool. I don't know if I'm gonna go for two or three yet. I'll have to measure it out and see what I can do. But um, three fans would be pretty cool if I can fit them in there. Now, obviously, normally on a T4, this would all be a further, you know, three inches that way, and you'd have a lot more space. The rads had to come into the engine bay a bit, so it's all getting pretty tight. Instead of running the 12-inch slimline fans, we're going to put these ones on. These are just little eight-inch fans, um, so I thought rather than having two bigger fans, I'll just have these. They actually flow the same. Three of these will actually flow the same at 600 cubic feet per minute, and the other ones are 900, so it should be about the same. It's a dual-pass radiator, just like the original one. It comes along here in the top then round down through the bottom I'm going to mark out the spots for that to go on the rad now get the fans mounted on there with some cable ties doesn't need to be fancy these three fans cost me about 40 quid on ebay which is perfect 
and that you can spend you know silly money on fans really you know i actually looked into it uh, the ones that cost three times as much just seem to have a nicer pretty cover on there but the screw holes are in exactly the same place so i don't know there could be some snake oil going on somewhere okay good thing about these fans is they are reversible so i've just switched this around here's one that hasn't been switched so as you'll see whenever you're looking at a fan or a blade you know just like a wing it's an aerofoil the cup side is always going to face the direction that you want things to go because um, it's basically scooping and pushing along I used to fly gliders many many moons ago back in the olden days in the cadet days any cadets here in the comments I used to do a lot of flying i've actually got over 500 flights and gliders that i did when i was younger propeller aircraft as well many 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 moons ago i ended up in finance as a stockbroker i should have ended up as a pilot but there you go what can i say right then as you can see everything's nice and tight i am going to get nortec or gravitune or one of those big companies to make me a sidewinder that gets the turbo further back because we've got loads of space back there that's uh, one of the beauties of having the engine tilted forward it just gives you a bit more space over the back but with everything tight at the moment i can always get a funk motorsport cover for this here um, you can get six inch ones and i think that'd be fine just to cover the hose so now what i'm going to do is just mock up where everything's got to go as you can see things are quite tight through here but it does fit quite nicely i've got my three inch hose here and i'm just figuring out where i've got to cut the hose in order to get that button up there and also to get that just tight around the rad there you go lovely cut edge is a bit tight inch perfect there we go clearing the rad and also clear in the back there. I'm going to cut a bit out there because I can see that rubbing over time and uh, put a bit of edging on there to stop it from rubbing on the hose. But yeah, that's in the right place. Now I can see right away that this pipe's not going to be good enough. Vibrant actually do a really tight right angle, which I think would work really, really well in there. So I might have to order one of those up. Tried to get the three inch to work, but it's just not happened. So I've gone back to the two and a half and that is a much 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 nicer fit now a bit more clearance there before the bends where everything gets restrictive i can then step up to a three dump valve takeoff here so that's obviously going to go in there and then it'll go on to the vibrant type 90 just there there we go result just tidying up the electrics now just before i put the front on this is going to be a lot easier now than it will be when the front's bolted on here are the two feeds one's going to be on permanently uh, with the ignition and the other one's going to be on one bar boost stage the relays of course are inside i've already shown you those so now i'm going to put the heat shrink uh, wrap over the top i've already put like a little grommet on there that earth is going to come straight off the pumps straight onto the chassis here there you go that looks good isn't it let's just do the earths as well right then all the pumps are hooked up right here's the cheap ebay three inch kit i'm just going to figure out now where everything's going to go so yeah this stage is quite fun it's just all a little chopping and changing and moving stuff around getting things where you want them so the trick with intercoolers is obviously to keep the sharpness of a bends to a minimum i don't really have much of a choice up there um but for this bit what i'm thinking is to bring that pipe up here from the throttle body using a 90 degree pipe very scientific stuff You've got about an inch to play with, so I'd rather it be on the coolant side to stop it banging against the bodywork. Right, here you go. Here's a Vibrant 90. So there you go. That gives me a nice tight 90 to get on there. I've got to chop a bit out of that hose, and I can have my dump valve up here right in front of the bonnet just to make as much noise as possible because, well, because race fan, really, obviously. On this side, we've got the coolant hose coming down here. And then we've got this area here for the boost hose to come up and obviously this is where it comes off the cold side of the intercooler so you go boost pipe comes along there now and goes up there nice bit of clearance off the chassis as well let's trim away until we get somewhere so for this to go back as far as it can before it starts hitting anything which is probably going to be in line with that blue hose Okay, hopefully you're getting the idea a bit now. Nice bit of clearance there. Also looks pretty cool as well, doesn't it? I'm trying to keep a nice flow there, really, around that corner. Just need to cut that, and that's going to give me that perfect line then up towards there. Cut out roughly where I think it's going to go here. So this one needs to go in there. And it does look, it does look actually pretty good. It does look about right. Up here we've got plenty of flex, which is really, really good. I've cut it perfectly now, but I'm actually going to cut a bit out. I've moved away from the idea now of actually having this hard welded. I've cut that spot on, but one thing I have actually noticed is that when that's there, 
there's hardly any movement in this at all. And obviously with, with the engine tilting backwards and forwards, maybe half an inch or so when it's under load, it's gonna load up this here. There is a bit of flex there, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a hump hose in the middle. It will just give that extra bit of flexibility there. I need to take it down to anti auto style to swage up the ends. Cut off a bit of a swaged end. That's gonna give a much better end for the pipe to go onto. My New Year's resolution for 2020 is to learn to weld. So I'm gonna get myself a TIG welder and try and learn to weld aluminium. Just, you know, mess around with loads of off cuts to try and figure out what's what and uh, obviously watch loads of YouTube videos. So if you know of any good YouTube welding pages, uh, comment below, let me know. Right guys, thanks for watching. I didn't want to make the video too long. Follow me on Facebook, on Instagram and I'll catch up with you guys soon. Mm -hmm.